Welcome to the Bergstrom Air Conditioning Seminars. At Bergstrom, we're here to help you. We'll provide you with practical knowledge that leads to the best performance for your air conditioning systems. In this seminar, we'll give you some helpful tips on how to diagnose, troubleshoot, and solve problems with your air conditioning systems. We'll take you through different system components, show you what to look for, and offer servicing tips to keep your air conditioning systems running efficiently. A few reminders before we start. Remember to always follow all safety procedures and best practices when diagnosing, servicing, or repairing air conditioning systems. And always refer to the OEM service manual for air conditioning system specifications and details. For the purpose of diagnostics and troubleshooting, the air conditioning system should be divided into two sections. Air conditioning control components consist of on-off switches, pressure switches, thermostatic switches, electrical components, actuators, and wiring. The other section, the refrigerant loop, consists of the compressor, condenser, expansion valve orifice tube, evaporator, receiver dryer accumulator, pipes, and hoses. Before jumping into diagnostics, complete an initial inspection of the air conditioning system. The first step in any inspection is attaching the appropriate air conditioning gauge set to the vehicle. This allows you to confirm whether or not the vehicle has refrigerant in the system. You can then determine whether the pressure switches should activate or whether the system has no refrigerant, which may indicate a system refrigerant leak. Now you're ready to move forward with the inspection. Let's go through a checklist of components. First, check for oil on air conditioning components. This typically indicates a leak. If oil is present on a component, confirm the potential leak with an appropriate leak detector. If a leak is found, repair it before proceeding. It's extremely important to inspect the operation of the heater and its components. In many vehicles, the air conditioner and heater share a plenum, and any malfunctioning heater parts may impact air conditioning performance. Look for broken brackets or mounts, paying attention to any component that is coming into contact with or rubbing another component. You'll also want to confirm 12-volt DC power to and from the air conditioning system fuses at the fuse block. Verify the proper tension of the compressor drive belt and make any necessary corrections. Inspect the cabin air filter and replace it if necessary. Proper airflow across the evaporator is essential for air conditioning operation. So far, we've attached gauges to the vehicle and confirmed that refrigerant is present in the system. The gauges should show a static or equal pressure on both the low side and high side. With the initial inspection completed, it's time to start diagnostics. Begin by turning the ignition key to the on position. Do not crank the engine. Engage the air conditioning on-off switch. What we're looking for is the sound of the air conditioning compressor clutch engagement. You should hear a click, which tells you several things. The air conditioning switch is working correctly. There is refrigerant in the system, and the refrigerant pressure is high enough to activate the low side of the dual pressure switch if installed. If the system has a refrigerant leak, it is a small leak, not a gross leak. The compressor clutch is working correctly. However, the clicking sound does not indicate that the air gap in the compressor clutch is correct. And the thermostat or thermistor is allowing voltage to be sent to the compressor clutch, which is indicative of a warm evaporator. Next, confirm the evaporator blower fan is operational on all speeds controlled by the fan switch. Any non-operational fan speeds must be corrected before continuing. Either from the inside of the truck or the outside of the truck, confirm the evaporator drain hose is attached and not restricted. Remember, trucks operated in a muddy or dusty environment often have drain hoses that are plugged, not allowing for proper evaporator drain operation. Now, you're ready for an air conditioning performance test, one of the most important steps in diagnostics. Each OEM has established criteria for vent temperature readings, low side pressure readings, and high side pressure readings at different ambient temperatures. Remember, system pressures are related to the outside air temperature. The higher the outside temperature, the higher the system operational pressures will be for both the high and low sides. 
each OEM has established criteria for running the test. Typically, engine RPM is raised, windows are down, and fan speed is on high. Readings are taken and compared to a chart. If vent temperatures and pressures are within stated readings, the air conditioning system is correct and no repairs are needed. Any readings not comparable with the OEM chart require troubleshooting and repair. Pressure gauges are an accurate tool for diagnostics and determination of air conditioning system function and or malfunction. It is essential that gauges work correctly and reflect actual pressures within the system. If gauges are inaccurate, it is necessary to have them calibrated prior to use. It's important to understand that there is no such thing as normal pressure of an air conditioning system because the system pressure depends on the outside temperature. Pressure readings and temperatures change continuously. A pressure temperature chart will help you determine if the air conditioning system pressures and system operation are correct. Pressure gauge readings may reveal or relate to possible problems with the air conditioning system. Remember, these readings should be used in conjunction with temperature measurements. Let's start with both the high and low side pressures being low and having a warm duct temperature. This could be caused by low refrigerant charge. The thermal expansion valve, or TXV, could be stuck closed. The orifice tube could be plugged or there could be high side restriction. High pressure readings on both sides with a warm duct temperature may indicate a refrigerant overcharge, while high readings on both gauges with a slightly cool duct temperature may be caused by overcharge or air in the system. Normal readings on both sides with a warm duct temperature may indicate moisture in the system or too much oil. If you record a high reading on the low pressure gauge, a low reading on the high pressure gauge with a warm duct temperature, there may be a problem with the compressor. Check the compressor with these steps. 1. Run a fused wire directly from the battery to the compressor to check for clutch operation. This bypasses the pressure switches and relays. You may then eliminate an electrical issue with the clutch. Two. Ensure power is going to and through pressure switches. You can jump the contacts on the pressure switch to see if you have clutch engagement. 3. Ensure any compressor relay, if installed, can control power to the compressor clutch or provide electrical ground. Check the OEM service manual for specifics. And 4. Ensure 12 volt DC at and through air conditioning system fuses. Finally, if both gauge readings appear normal with a warm to cool duct temperature, there could be heated air bleeding into the plenum. In this case, you should check the blend air door to ensure it is shutting off completely. This door can either be cable operated or electrically operated. Another diagnostic tactic for air conditioning systems is to check symptoms. Some common symptoms include ice on the evaporator core, compressor issues, warm air from vents, and system odors. We'll review each system with suggested repairs in depth. First, let's look at how ice on the evaporator core can cause air conditioning system problems. One cause can be the malfunctioning of the thermostat or no frost probe if present. The best solution is to make sure the electrical connection of the thermostat or of no frost probe is in working condition and that the sensor is in the proper position. Replace any defective parts as needed. Malfunctions by the blower fan can also cause ice on the evaporator core. Check to make sure that with the air conditioning system running, at least the first ventilation speed works. If not, make sure the electrical system is properly connected. An air conditioning system can also be noisy. Noise heard when the system is turned on is not always a defect, but if the noise persists, then check for the following malfunctions and apply these solutions. Number one, if the belt is worn or has slipped, check the wear and tension of the belt. Number two, if the belt idler pulley is noisy, replace it. Number three, check to see if the compressor clutch armature plate is slipping. 
Then make sure that the distance between the compressor pulley and electric clutch is 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters. Number four, check to see if the expansion valve is whistling, and if the noise persists, then replace the valve. Occasionally, compressors may wind up with too much oil in them. If too much oil is suspected, there is little you can do short of starting all over. In this case, you would drain the oil from the compressor and flush the components of the system and add back the amount of oil specified by the OEM. Do not flush the receiver dryer or accumulator. If you must replace the compressor, you should drain the oil out of the old compressor into a cylinder where you can identify the amount. Then drain the new compressor of all of its oil and put back into the new compressor the amount drained from the old compressor. This will guarantee that you're not putting too much oil into the system. If you do not know whether the rest of the system may or may not have too much oil, you must start over. Another major servicing issue is when the air conditioning system creates unpleasant odors inside the vehicle. This is usually caused by mold and bacteria growing on the surface of the evaporator core. To eliminate this problem, use an antibacterial product to treat the evaporator and eliminate mold and bacteria. Also, make sure there are no obstructions with the drain hose. The next service problem we'll look at is blockage in the air conditioning system circuit. A useful diagnostic approach is the feel test. Feel the tubes and components for temperature drops that can indicate the blockage location. Caution should be taken as the high side or compressor discharge side of the air conditioning system will be extremely hot. Extreme care should be taken to not burn your hands. The location of the charging ports in relation to the air conditioning system must be taken into consideration. We recommend using the field test as well as the pressure gauge readings. There are different blockage possibilities. We'll start with blockage on the high side before the charge port. The high side pressure will be low, and the low side pressure will be low to normal. Things to check are the high pressure switch will not deactivate the air conditioning system, and the low pressure switch might. The compressor is noisy, the high side hose is very hot before blockage, or the high side hose is very cool to warm after blockage. If there is a blockage on the low side after the charge port, the low pressure switch will deactivate the air conditioning system. There can also be frosting on the low side hose fittings before the blockage. Blockage can also be on the low side before the charge port. The high side pressure will be low, and the low side pressure will be low to vacuum. The low pressure switch will deactivate the air conditioning system. Plus, there can be frosting on the low side hose fittings before the blockage. The receiver dryer can also have a blockage problem. As in many of the other blockages, the low pressure switch will deactivate the air conditioning system. Plus, if the blockage is in the receiver dryer itself, then the outlet tube will be frosted. Let's review air conditioner servicing. EPA 609 certification is mandatory for those persons handling, recovering, recycling, and or recharging refrigerant. 609 certification online testing can be completed through the Mobile Air Conditioning Society or MAX at www.maxw.org and the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence or ASE at www.ase.com. Here are some common servicing procedures. First is air conditioner evacuation. This places the system in a vacuum, which lowers the boiling point of a liquid and allows for air to be removed from the system. If moisture is not removed from the system, it can freeze and cause blockage. It may dilute lubricants and can even create acids when mixed with refrigerants. Be sure to vacuum for a minimum of 45 minutes. Evacuate an air conditioning system longer if the system has been flushed. Once the system has reached the desired vacuum reading and evacuation has taken place for the length of time required, close the gauges for five minutes and see if the vacuum will hold, indicating no leaks. A rise in vacuum within five minutes is an indicator of a leak in the system. The most important step in getting a newly repaired system up and running is recharging the refrigerant. 
Done properly, the system should perform efficiently. If not done properly, damage can be done to the system or the system will not work as designed or will not work efficiently. When recharging refrigerant, know the system lubrication and refrigerant specifications for the vehicle you're working on. Use only calibrated equipment to charge refrigerant. Follow equipment manufacturer's recommendations for equipment use and maintenance. Verify system pressure and temperatures using an OEM performance chart. And verify system cycling, fan operation, and vent temperatures using an OEM performance chart. Remember, never charge liquid refrigerant into the suction low side of the compressor. Compressor damage will occur and never add more oil than the amount specified by the OEM service manual. A significant deterioration in system performance may occur with too much oil. The proper amount of refrigerant and refrigerant oil is necessary for an air conditioning system to operate properly and efficiently. Here are some tips for handling refrigerant. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, mandates that refrigerant recovery and recycling equipment must meet SAE J2210 standards. Refrigerant recovery, recycling and recharge equipment must meet SAE J2788 standards. Always follow the equipment manufacturer's recommendations for the proper operation of their equipment and follow the OEM specifications for systems refrigerant and oil volume. Refrigerant leaks are one of the most frequent repairs made to an air conditioning system. A leaking air conditioning system will cause catastrophic damage to the system if not repaired in a timely manner. In an R134A system, refrigerant and refrigerant oil mix and travel continuously through the system. A loss of refrigerant is a loss of refrigerant oil. At some point, the loss of oil will damage rotating parts of the air conditioning system. Proper leak detection equipment is necessary to identify a refrigerant leak. Several recommended methods of leak detection include electronic leak detectors, which can detect very small leaks and require approximately 50 PSI in the system. UV leak detectors may also be used. Many OEMs are using receiver dryers with refrigerant dye in them, but the dye must meet EPA J2297 standards. Another method is pressurizing the system with nitrogen using a soap and water solution. Leaks are identified by bubbles. Finally, you can vacuum the leak down during evacuation. You've now learned some important diagnostic, troubleshooting, and servicing tips for components in the two different types of air conditioning systems. To learn more about both systems, be sure and watch our additional seminars. Air Conditioning System Components and Functions, Air Conditioning System Types and Operation, and Air Conditioning System Maintenance and Service. Each seminar is helpful in keeping your air conditioning systems up and running. At Bergstrom, we're here for you.